we both declare the conclusion of the negotiations, say it together with me, <laughs> of the Global Compact for Safe, Orderly, and Regular Migration is agreed. Mr. President, yes. Oh, come on, give me your hand. Yeah, before we, we hand over the floor to the President of the General Assembly, let us, uh, as co-facilitators, co I should be able to say the word by now, I think, yes. uh, say a few thank yous. First of all, again, thanks to all the delegations uh, in the room. Thank you for uh, negotiating, discussing, uh, remaining constructive at every point throughout the process. We had a couple of interviews yesterday, and one thing we insisted is that the process remained drama-free to the end, and that speaks to the quality of the people we had in the negotiation room. Thank you very, very much for that. Thanks also to the stakeholders um, who are here with us uh, today and who were with us throughout the whole process. Your contributions, NGOs, academia, private sector were incredibly important and will remain so uh, in the future when it's about implementation of the compact. Thanks to the President of the General Assembly and his team for his uh, support, very strong support throughout the whole process. Although, I mean, it was your job, we had to, your, your mandate you gave us, but your support was absolutely crucial. Thanks, uh, Amina, please, through you to the Secretary General, but also to you uh, and your team. And thank you, uh, SRSG Louise Arbour, through you and, and your fantastic team for the wonderful cooperation we had and the support. Thanks to DJCM, um, uh, uh, your team, SIAD especially, who did a really great job helping us. Thanks to the interpreters. And last but not least, we really want to thank both of us, our fantastic team with us this morning. Anna. Stand up. Up. Andrina. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Bettina. And Fernando. It is no exaggeration when we say, we have always said, that these four young diplomats, two Mexicans and two Swiss, really embody today the new vision for the world we want and the new vision for real multilateralism. We really, 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 both of us owe them a lot. Thank you so much. Now it is my great honor to give the floor to the President of the General Assembly, Mr. Leitchak. You have the floor, please. Thank you very much, Excellencies, Madam Deputy Secretary General, dear colleagues, friends. Today is the last meeting of the intergovernmental negotiations on the Global Compact for Safe, Orderly and Regular Migration. And before I get any further, I want to express my thanks. First to our co-facilitators, ambassadors, Juan Jose Gomez Camacho and Jörg Lauber. Without a doubt, they had one of the hardest jobs at the United Nations these past two years. But they took it on with a commitment and an energy that inspired us all. And we are grateful to their teams of experts who worked some very intense hours. I also want to thank Special Representative Louise Arbour. The work of her and her team was invaluable and will continue to be as this process moves forward. Special thanks must also go to the International Organization for Migration for the vital role it has played. And I want to pay tribute to others who may not be in this room today, in particular the civil society representatives who engaged with us along the way. Their stories and perspectives helped to bring this issue to life. And finally, 
I want to thank all of you here. You should all be very proud for two main reasons. First, because of what we have achieved. We have reached an agreement. And I think it is important to be very clear on what this agreement is and what it is not. The reality is that migration is here. It has been here for centuries, and it will be here for centuries more. And this agreement addresses this reality and offers the way how to deal with it. It does not encourage migration, nor does it aim to stop it. It is not legally binding. It does not dictate. It will not impose. And it fully respects the sovereignty of states. And its potential is huge. It can guide us from a reactive to a proactive mode. It can help us to draw out the benefits of migration and mitigate the risks. It can provide a new platform for cooperation and it can be a resource in finding the right balance between the rights of people and the sovereignty of states. And in December, it will formally become the first comprehensive framework on migration the world has ever seen. But it is not just what we have achieved. It is also how we did it, which was, in short, through real dialogue. And that's the second reason you should all feel very proud. You listen to each other's positions. You try to understand where colleagues were coming from. You search for compromises. In fact, many of you even spend your nights working to find new solutions for the morning. And here I want to make a crucial observation. I believe humanity always got the upper hand. Even delegates who took vastly different positions could find a way to respect and listen to each other. And this is exactly why we created the United Nations and why we gave it an organ like the General Assembly. In here, all member states are on equal footing. All issues and matters can be dealt with, and all voices can be heard. And we use this forum for good. We engaged in what I think were the most transparent and inclusive discussions on international migration in history. And so we proved that multilateralism is very much alive. And we showed what can all achieve when we commit to a real dialogue. So yes, we should feel proud. But under no circumstances can we see our work is over. And this is the third and final issue I want to touch on today. 2,098 migrant deaths have been recorded since we began negotiations. Children made up about 400 of them. Many not reported have been lost in the desert or on other dangerous journeys. Others, including countless women and girls, have fallen victim to human trafficking. And as we speak, thousands of migrants workers worry about their health, the security, and the welfare of their families. At the same time, migration continues to be used as a political tool on all sides of the spectrum. Often, this is based not on facts, but on political interests. So many challenges remain. We need to be aware of them as we look to the international conference in December and to the months and years ahead. But we also need something else, and that is all of you. You know this document better than anyone. You were the ones to shape it. You heard the facts, the data, and the human stories behind it. And you are all key to its success. Please don't let your work end here. Tell others what you saw and heard. Drum up the political will. Answer the questions. Give the clarifications. Speak up against misinformation. Claim the narrative. And keep driving this process forward. So, dear colleagues and friends, I will end on, on this note. I hope you are all very proud. You rose to the challenge. You were tested and tried as diplomats. You came back day after day, week after week, to talk, to listen, and to work for solutions. In doing so, you demonstrated what this great organization is capable of. And you allowed us all to keep a promise that we made to humanity. So this is an historic moment. But please don't forget 
there is a lot left to do. The eyes of the world are watching. They have seen us to come to one milestone. But really, the journey is only beginning. I thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I would like to invite the Deputy Secretary General now to make her statement. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dear President Lajcek, dear co-facilitators, excellencies, dear Louise, uh, friends, many, many congratulations to the member states today for the his this historic moment. The incredible work of the co-chairs through thick and thin, and I was so pleased to see that really what was behind these um, incredible gentlemen was even more incredible young women and a man. <laughs> but I would also like to thank um, Louise Arbor, our Secretary General, who has shown amazing leadership and commitment with her team to supporting member states and the co-facilitators uh, to be part of this historic um, occasion. So thank you, Louise. Uh, you have, member states, delivered on the commitment of the New York Declaration to craft a global compact for safe, orderly, and regular migration for the people of the world. That's a beacon of hope, our collective voice to leaving no one behind. This compact demonstrates the potential of multilateralism, our ability to come together on issues that demand global collaboration, however complicated and contentious that they may be. I thank and congratulate you on behalf of the Secretary General and myself and on behalf of those who will benefit from this negotiation, our humanity. This week, we heard from Indu Ibrahim. She is a lady from the Sahel, and she told us that many of the men were left with no dignity in their regions, and they had two choices, to join Boko Haram or to drown in the sea. Today, you gave her hope that they could get their dignity back. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, migration raises profound issues around state sovereignty and human rights, around what constitutes voluntary movement, the relationship between development and mobility, and how to support social cohesion. This discourse around migration is increasingly hostile. Too often, the realities of migrants' lives, irregular and regular, is made even more difficult by prejudice and hardship. This is not only dangerous, it flies in the face of the overwhelming positive impact of migration. The large mixed flows of refugees and migrants that we continue to witness and the tens of thousands of preventable deaths of migrants in transit show that our collective response was woefully inadequate. However, today's agreement will strengthen faith in our ability to develop cooperative approaches to global challenges. Let me highlight four reasons why we believe this compact is so important. First, that it is global. It does not focus on any particular region, but considers all geographical locations and aspects of migration. And I commend your commitment to reviewing progress on a regular basis. Second, the compact's aim is not to stop migration, but to manage it as a historic and ongoing reality and to support the safe, orderly, and irregular movement of people. Third, it reinforce, reinforces the universality of our human rights, whoever and wherever we are. And it will contribute to implementing the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, our shared roadmap for a safe, prosperous future on a healthy planet. Finally, the Compact is a living document which recognizes the demographic, economic, and other key factors create a constantly changing canvas and will require an evolving response and collective responsibility. Excellencies, as I said earlier, that the Compact represents the potential of multilateralism. And I use the word potential because the agreement in principle must now be matched by concrete action. First, that you will formally adopt the compact in Morocco on the 10th of December. The Morocco conference at the highest political level will bring the compact to life and highlight our collective determination and responsibility to ensure its implementation. And I urge all our governments to join the Secretary General and our host, His Majesty the King of Morocco, in Marrakesh. Secondly, we must use the time till the 10th of December to generate the momentum and ideas to give life to the compact. We in the United Nations system are committed to playing our part. We've undertaken in time for Marrakesh to put in place a UN migration network to ensure coordinated, coherent support to the compact's implementation with a particular focus on the country level. 
Some objectives of the compact can be met unilaterally. For example, the provision of basic services to migrants. Many require cooperation, such as improving consular cooperation and promoting circular migration programs. Other objectives can be achieved immediately. There is nothing stopping us in the pursuit of better, more comprehensive migration data as a basis on which to develop stronger evidence-based policies. Much work indeed is already getting going on this regard. However, most of this can only be addressed with time, such as enabling people to pursue their hopes for a better future without feeling compelled to travel outside their home countries. So let us commit to working together in the coming months with civil society, with the private sector, civic and subnational authorities, young people and migrant movements to generate ideas that will breathe life into the compact. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the Global Compact for Safe, Orderly and Regular Migration provides us, above all, with a platform for the future, but it will also be judged on its results today. It provides a way forward to make an immediate and significant difference to enable us to meet our collective global responsibility if we can summon strong and universal political support. The United Nations stands ready to assist you in rising to this challenge. I thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Deputy Secretary General. And now it's my pleasure to give the floor to Madam Louise Arbor, Special Representative of the Secretary General. Louise, you have the floor, please. Thank you. Excellencies, uh, President of the General Assembly, dear Amina, ladies and gentlemen, let me start by joining my voice to that of the President of the General Assembly and the Deputy Secretary General in, of course, congratulating all of you, Excellencies, for the historic agreement that you've reached today. Allow me also to express my particular appreciation to uh, His Excellency Miroslav Laszczak, the President of the General Assembly, for his extremely skillful and dedicated leadership, including in his choice of the uh, co-facilitators for this process, and I also congratulate them, Ambassador Gomez Camacho and Lauber, for their very steady hands uh, in moving forward this process. Their skills, drive, and commitment, and that of their team has uh, contributed immensely in getting us where we are today. Please allow me also to say thank you to my, to my own small team for the very impressive work that they've done in the course of this, these last few months. The expertise and contributions that we received actually from the entire UN system, from IOM, and from the many other UN partners were invaluable in our efforts. And I also want to acknowledge and thank the contributions that we've received, all of us, from civil society, from the private sector, from trade unions, from mayors, and from many, many other groupings um, in the months behind us. So to all of them, I say your continued engagement on the road to Marrakesh will be vital to the success of that conference and I stand ready to work with all of you to ensure that your voices continue to be heard. Excellencies, you have succeeded in anchoring your debates in reality, not in mythology, and in a reality that presents itself globally in many, many different ways, in many, many very complex configurations. You have overcome differences and found common ground, in the recognition that international migration is inevitably both clearly a matter of state sovereignty, but also a matter of state interdependence. And that here, as elsewhere, your national interest will be better secured through international cooperation. For migrants, for the communities in which they settle, and for the people that they leave behind, the Global Compact presents a blueprint for hope. Human mobility will be with us as it has always been. Its chaotic, dangerous, exploitative aspects cannot be allowed to become the new normal. The implementation of the compact will bring safety, order, and economic progress to everyone's benefit. The text before us is a flexible and forward-looking document recognizing that the configuration of migration will evolve 
and that we must have a framework by which to address both today's challenges and tomorrow's opportunities. The agreement you have reached ushers in the next phase of the process, its formal adoption in Marrakesh later this year. The Intergovernmental Conference to Adopt the Global Compact, hosted by the Kingdom of Morocco on December 10 and 11, is indeed an opportunity for the international community to convene at the highest level, not only to celebrate this historic moment, but more importantly, to launch innovative measures to anchor it both in reality and in ambition. The coming months will be crucial to build momentum and forge partnerships in the lead up to the conference, and I very much look forward to working with all of you to make this event a resounding success fulfilling the promise of the Global Compact to make migration work for all in a truly safe, regular, and orderly fashion. Thank you very much.